oh, oh, hey! Happy Wednesday! Welcome to Mash on This, Mashable's daily culture entertainment show that gives you tomorrow's biggest news stories today. Sponsored by Ally's Hardest Working Dollar. I'm your host, Adara Brown, with a serious ingrown hair problem, also known as Dory Greenberg. On Mash on This, we give you a quick rundown of what we think is the best the internet has to offer. So be sure to tell us what you think in the comments, and we'll get to them at the end of the show. Now, let's get into it, shall we? Let's talk about sex. Ism, baby. Uh, it's not just all the rage in America. It's a phenomenon that occurs worldwide. And turns out our neighbors across the pond are just as sexist as we are. The BBC released a newly published annual report containing the pay rates of some of the network's on-air stars. According to the report, the BBC's top earner, radio presenter Chris Evans, not that Chris Evans, the British one, is paid between 2.2 and 2.5 million pounds, more than four times the corporation's highest earning woman, Claudia Winkleman. The report also said about two-thirds of those who earn more than 150,000 pounds are male, compared to only one-third who are female. While at a press conference, BBC's Director General Tony Hall acknowledged the gender pay gap and questioned it by saying, is this where we want to be? No. But are we pushing further and faster than any other broadcaster? Most certainly. Hall went on to state that the BBC wants all their leading and presenting roles to be equally divided between men and women by the year 2020. And while it seems like he's on board with the whole thing, it's just because there are the same quantity of men and women doing the same work doesn't automatically mean that they'll be compensated the same amount. What do you make about all this gender pay cap at the BBC, or in America, for that matter? Let us know in the comments. You know when someone is caught doing something wrong, and they do that thing where instead of owning up to the truth like an adult or just staying silent, they aggressively make fun of the truth with the intent of trying to make everybody else feel stupid for believing it? Well, that's exactly what the Russian propaganda network RT is doing. These ads were spotted in Moscow's international airport recently, and they were deployed in order to troll Americans and mock allegations that the Kremlin interfered in the U.S. presidential election. The thing to keep in mind here is that these ads were not only made by the Kremlin-controlled media outlet, but according to an RT spokeswoman, all of the copy for these ads were personally approved by Vladimir Putin. And when BuzzFeed asked to clarify whether the statement about Putin was a joke or not, the spokeswoman replied, Russians are not allowed to joke about Putin. I just want to, like, I really want to say, wow, thank God we don't have to be subjected to crazy propaganda ads like the Russians do. And then I was like, oh, our president still has a Twitter account and refuses to have normal press conferences with the free press, so I guess we're not completely in the clear either. Hmm. Let's move on from Russia to another part of the world, Thailand. Take a look at this dude. Unless you are in Thailand or are Thai American, you probably don't recognize this YouTuber who goes by My Mate Nate. His real name is Nathan Bartling and he's a millennial Mormon prankster who was a missionary in Thailand and then decided to make the country his home. The grand majority of his YouTube videos are in Thai, which he comple he's completely fluent in and he's been profiled by the likes of the Huffington Post for bringing some innocence back to in internet pranking. But Nate has also caused quite some controversy. Like that time he posted a video that essentially shames Thai students for not knowing English, and that other time when he filmed his cat fighting a scorpion, which is currently being investigated for violating animal cruelty laws. And most recently, Nate was arrested when he decided it would be fun 
to flatten pennies using a real functioning train that had people on it. In the video documenting this act, which has since been taken down along with the scorpion cat video and the mocking Thai students video, you could see Nate and friends taping coins from different countries to a train track, which ended up leaving visible impressions on the tracks. For this, he was charged with trespassing, trespassing, and fined a hundred baht, or about two dollars and ninety cents. Not a lot, but he could also face paying for damages to state property. Whether his intentions were pure or not, this kid has made and has continued to make poor choices for the sake of his three million YouTube followers. But what do you think about my mate Nate? Let us know in the comments. Every once in a while, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie will put on his favorite pair of elastic pants and venture out into the world, sometimes even going to public places where he's among people he was elected to serve. Last night, that place was the Met Mets Cardinals game where Christie somewhat miraculously caught a foul ball. But despite his impressive one-handed grab, the fans seem less than impressed. Take a look. 3-2, he's popped up. Rivera giving a, a look at it and a souvenir for Chris Christie. Are you kidding me? How about that? You just noticed him. You're, boy, are you hot, I'll tell you. You just noticed him between innings, and what do you know? He gets a ball, left handed catch. Get That's out of here. Nice to see him get from the beach here to the ballpark. <laughs> yes, I very much enjoyed that beach singer at the end. Uh, so the video cuts out before we could really see, but it looks like Christy got up and gave the ball to a kid sitting nearby. Regardless, let's just chalk this up as a win for Christy, which are few and far between these days. Why not? In somewhat internet shattering news, Google is preparing for the end of searching. For some ungodly reason, the king of search engines is now introducing Google Feed, which means that now Google's search app on mobile phones will include a personalized feed with links about certain hobbies, travel, sports, celebs, and other topics, and you'll be able to fine-tune your feed by clicking a new follow button that accompanies these search results. Basically, exactly like what we see on Facebook. However, Google's VP of engineering insists that Google is not trying to duplicate Facebook, stating, this feed is really about your interests, not about what your friends are interested in. Google feed will suggest links based on your Google search history, as well as data from other Google services, such as YouTube, Gmail, and Google Calendar. But as we all know very well, sometimes people Google things that they don't want showing up again, ever. For instance, I have been known to Google the right way to pop a zit, but that certainly does not mean that I want to be bombarded with pimple popper videos in my Google feed. Anyway, this update is rolling out to the Google app for Android and iOS tomorrow in the US and will be available worldwide in the next couple of weeks. And then, I don't know, I guess we all just start using Bing until they start doing the same thing. I don't know. Also, Google Plus, that was this, and that failed. Anyway, we want to say congrats to Luis Fonzi, whose hit single, Despacito, has become the most streamed song of all time. Here's the video for the song played in reverse for copyright reasons and for dramatic effect. Ooh. According to Universal Music Latin Entertainment, the song now has reached 4.6 billion with a B streams globally. And since it's the song of the summer, that number will only continue to rise. But the most interesting part about all this is that Despacito dethroned Justin Bieber's song, Sorry. But it was Bieber getting on the remix of Despacito that directly led to the song's success. I don't know about y'all, but I hope this sparks another Latin invasion renaissance like we had back in the early 2000s. There are so many great Spanish songs out there. So please, y'all watching, send us your favorite Spanish songs in the comment section. I promise I will review them. I really want more of this in my life, and I, I just need help from you guys.